Hey guys, this is Ryan from the forum. We were talking about uh, shuffling and some people maybe wanted some demonstrations. So I'm going to make a quick video. Hopefully we'll keep this thing under five minutes and uh, you can kind of get a feel for what I'm talking about. So the way I'm not talking about is this. This crazy W bin that we got going on here. Don't like that at all. You're having to bend the cards one way to shuffle them and then re-bend them just to get them to go back. So all you're doing is constantly bending this card one way, the other way. It's going to wear your card out um, quicker than most. The other way, which is on the video up top, um, is people taking the corners and bending them like this and letting them riffle there. Um, that's a little bit closer to what I'm talking about, but not exactly the same. We want to eliminate the bend. So let me give you a quick show of what I'm talking about. This is what this is the shuffle I like to do when I'm playing card games. Right there. Let's maybe do one more. So really minimal bending. I'm gonna take this card right here. That's the amount of bending you get. Not not with the corner bent up like that. Just a almost no bending at all. This card's really just naturally bent that way. You'd probably see no bend uh, if it wasn't. Let me try my Netrunner deck here. These are uh, the uh, FFG sleeves, so you know these are the these are the real thick sleeves. So let's see how this works. Just like that. No bending. Just picking them up and letting them drop. Okay, so what's kind of the trick that we're not seeing in the other videos to do this? And there is a, a trick to it. And if you didn't really know how the trick worked, it would be hard just to figure out on your own. So hopefully when I show you this, you'll kind of get the hang of it. First thing you want to do is it's easier to do this at the edge of the table. You can do it up here, no problem. But it's a little bit easier to get your thumbs up underneath the deck for what we're going to be doing in just a second. So. Especially if you don't have a mat or it's a, like a wood table, definitely just pull those edges just slightly. The deck slightly over the edge of the table. Okay, next step is you want to place your hand over the deck. This is very similar to the crazy bend method in hand position at least. These three fingers go right over it, kind of kind of make a shield almost. This finger can sit here on top. And it can kind of help with the bending of the card, but once you get real used to it, you, you, you won't be bending. You'll really just be lifting up and then dropping the cards. And your thumb is right here along the back side. It's very similar to if you're playing Texas Hold'em and you want to look at your card. You cover it and you lift up with your thumb. See what you got. Um, but again, the bending is what we're going to eliminate. So the real trick is when your hands are over like this, you're going to have to bevel the deck. So you're going to push, kind of like that, to where you have a nice beveled deck. That is really the trick to making this work with minimal, minimal, minimal to zero bins. Um, without that curve, you're going to want to have to use the you know, bending force kind of way to let the cards flip off your thumb. With the bevel, you can pick up the deck and with a real light touch, they almost just slide off your thumb. It's a lot, I mean, you, you can do that without the bevel, but it's so much harder and, I mean, real technique, it's just so much easier to let them go with the bevel. So, get your deck ready. Hands over. You want to give that a uh, bevel, and the bevel's not not really it's not really a move. You're really just going to put your hands over and slightly adjust like that. What I was showing you before is pretty exaggerated, but that's what you'll be doing. So bevel. That's why it's easier to have it at the end of the table. You kind of get your thumb underneath there. Lift up. 
you don't have to bend with that finger here. You probably want to in the very beginning until you get the hang of it, then you'll be able to eliminate that. Bevel, lift, and with the corners just slightly into each other, probably more exaggerated when you first start, but just slightly into each other, you will let the cards flip off your thumb, which is, with the bevel, extremely, extremely easy. Okay, and then like in the video above, he shows you how to box the cards in using your pinkies and, and your fingers here, which is a nice touch. And like that. But again, the real trick is getting that bevel and lifting up the deck. Not really bending it, lifting it, but just lifting really the whole, this whole part of the deck and having them beveled, they'll just slide off your thumb. You have a real light touch when you do this shuffle. You're going to naturally want to do what everybody else does in the videos and have a real thick uh, man grip on this. Um, but think of it, you know, like a small bird that you don't want to, uh, you got to keep it contained, but you don't want to hurt it. Just like that. So let's just do a real couple quick with the Netrunner deck. Here's a Netrunner deck. Just like that. And the real thing is, look how quick the shuffle can be. I mean, I can, whoops, I didn't get that one there. You can do this extremely fast with relatively no error. And again, very little stress on the cards. You get a good interlace. Uh, the only problem with this is if you have a large stack, yeah, you I mean you can shuffle that, and the better you get, the larger stacks you can get. Most people, when they get a large stack like this, you're just going to want to farrow it in like everybody does, which is definitely the way um, I typically do it with this size deck. Twilight Struggle, where you have, you know, huge stacks when they're sleeved, because, you know, the sleeves, especially the FFG sleeves, adds the height so much. I'll normally break it into smaller packs this size, shuffle a pack, take another pack, shuffle it, and then shuffle those into each other. Um, you obviously can't shuffle ginormous stacks with a riffle shuffle, but you really can't do that with a regular riffle shuffle anyway. So again, the main advantage to this is to just not, I'm not going to do it to these cards because I'm a crazy person and I can't mess them up. Um, but yeah, to not bend the cards, just a real easy shuffle. So I hope that kind of explains what I'm talking about. I hope, I hope you can see how the bend and the other shuffles are, are more extreme than this. I mean, it's a small point. You know, there's no reason to freak out about it, but I, I think it's a, a so far superior way to shuffle. And I just noticed that nobody knows how to do it because you're never taught that way. I mean, I had to learn it through magic books when I was growing up. So, I mean, I would have never came across it either. So just trying to help share some uh, interesting tips. So we found it interesting. If you need any more tips, feel free to just message me. Um, if you need anything specific, I can always try to make another video. Now that I made this one, maybe find out what I did not so good. So, um, yep, yeah, have fun. Thanks.